Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Buddhang tammang sangang namasami This is the last full day of retreat. So even though I feel like we've only just started practicing samadhi, uh, it's time to introduce some practices of, of insight. Uh, what to build on that foundation of samadhi. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier in the retreat, Mm, the two forms of insight meditation that the Buddha recommends mm, the most frequently, that we find in the most, uh, most commonly throughout the suttas, are uh, the perception of impermanence and the perception of not-self. Uh, of these two, the perception of impermanence is much easier to understand and much easier to practice. Uh, the perception of not-self tends to take a lot of time even to get to a point where we start to intellectually understand it, uh, let alone develop an experiential understanding of it. Impermanence is much easier to relate to, uh, at least in the beginning. Uh, so, for example, mm, a few days ago, uh, it was blistering hot and felt like the middle of summer, uh, today it feels like the middle of winter. Something's changed. What's changed? Well, uh, from the level of direct experience, what's changed is physical sensation. A few days ago, there was the physical sensation of heat. Today, there's the physical sensation of cold. That's what's changed. Uh, so that's one way of starting to apprehend uh, impermanence. Uh, so briefly speaking, uh, one of the first ways that we can enter into a perception of impermanence is to notice change, to notice the change in our experience. Uh, and this change is constantly happening. Uh, moment by moment, there's change occurring. Uh, sensations are always changing, body and mind, always changing. So then a very direct uh, and simple way of starting to enter the perception of impermanence uh, is start with your samadhi practice, whatever you're using. Uh, so during this retreat I was recommending to either use loving-kindness meditation uh, or mindfulness of the body. Uh, and I encourage using mindfulness of the body um, Unless it's, it's really not working for you, then it's fine to use the metta practice instead. Uh, so you start with your samadhi practice, and once the mind is relatively stable, uh, relatively mm, steady, on a direct, clear knowing uh, of the meditation object, uh, then notice that the object is constantly changing. So let's say you're focusing on your body. Well, what are we focusing on? We're focusing on clearly, intensely feeling physical sensation. Well, look and see, is it exactly the same sensation every single moment? Or is it changing every single moment? And as you look, you'll see that it's changing every single moment. You can feel it changing every single moment. So this is the first uh, entry uh, into the perception of impermanence. It's recognizing that whatever you're focusing on is constantly changing. It's not permanent. Uh, it's not solid. Uh, it's constantly changing. And the same applies if you're using loving-kindness meditation. Uh, so once the mind is firmly established in the awareness of metta, the awareness of the metta sensation, the metta mind state, uh, then again you direct attention to the fact that it's constantly changing. There's always fluctuations in the experience of metta. There's always fluctuations in the mind, fluctuations in mind states, 
fluctuations in the quality and characteristics of the mind uh, and the mental condition. So it's actually the same, uh, the same practice as with uh, directing the perception of impermanence towards the body. Uh, and uh, once we have a clear perception of impermanence uh, with one part of our experience, then we can allow it to spread. We can allow the perception of impermanence to encompass our entire domain of experience. Uh, and usually this is done gradually. Uh, so for example, if you're focusing on your hands, uh, so focusing on the, the sensation of, of the hands in the lap, uh, then starting with that clear awareness of the sensations in that area, feeling the constant change of the sensations in the area of the hands, uh, then you might allow your attention to expand uh, to the whole body, to feel that the whole body is, is constantly changing, not solid, uh, not permanent, uh, not substantial. Uh, and then from that, you can expand that to uh, all of your physical senses. So seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, it's all constantly changing. Mm, there's nothing solid or persistent anywhere in there. And from there, you can, you can bring it to the domain of the mind, recognizing that the mind also is, is impermanent, constantly changing, not solid, uh, not substantial. And so too with all the uh, components and objects of mind. Mm, so not permanent, not solid, not substantial. Uh, so working on letting go of the illusion of stable, solid, persistent, ongoing objects. Uh, because when we look closely at our experience, when we stop expecting to feel solid, persistent objects, and we open up to what's actually going on, then it becomes clear that there are no solid, substantial, persistent objects uh, anywhere, inside or outside, physical or non-physical. Uh, absolutely nothing remains exactly the same moment to moment. Uh, and we can also start to recognize the mm, mirage-like quality of experience, mm, the mm, ghostly, half-real, not quite there but still somehow there quality uh, of every single aspect of body and mind, <coughs> of every single aspect of experience. And that it's here, there's clearly something going on, uh, but there's nothing that we can hold on to. There's nothing that we can uh, cling to. Uh, there's nothing which persists. So the moment we turn to look at anything, it's already gone. Uh, the moment we try to hold on to any sensation, any mind state, any experience, it's already gone. Uh, so, the experiences that we have, uh, the Buddha uses a number of, of interesting similes. Uh, when he says, it's like a flash of lightning. The moment you turn to look at it, it's gone. Something happened. There's no denying that something happened. That, but the, you, can't, you can't keep it. You can't keep it. It's just, bam, gone. You can't hold on to it. So developing the perception of impermanence naturally leads to the mind of non-attachment because we start to see that there's absolutely nothing which can be attached to. There's absolutely nothing which can be held on to. Uh, and the whole process of holding, of attaching, of clinging is it's fundamentally absurd. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it's trying to grab something which can't be grabbed. Uh, it's trying to, to keep something which, which has no substance, which can't be kept. So developing the perception of impermanence, naturally the mind starts to, starts to release. It starts to release its painful grip on that which cannot be gripped. 
so this practice then naturally starts to lead to mm, letting go of the causes of dukkha, letting go of the causes of, of discontent, of dissatisfaction. Uh, it naturally leads to mm, serenity, to contentment. Uh, and it also naturally leads to clearly seeing that body and mind are not who we are. Uh, because if body is, is mm, who we are, if the body is, is what we are, uh, then there would be something persistent. Uh, so whatever it is you think you are right now, wait a moment and it's gone. So clearly that wasn't you. There's something else here. But if you think that's you, well just wait a moment and it's gone. So clearly that wasn't you either. So whatever it is that we think of as me, just wait a second, it's gone. So clearly that wasn't me. So why do we keep thinking that this one is me? The last one clearly wasn't me. The body a moment ago clearly wasn't me. So why do I think this body is me? It's ridiculous. Uh, it's just this, this malformed habit we have of constantly creating a sense of self-identity around whatever is present, uh, around whatever experience appears before the mind. We latch on to it and we think, oh, this is me. This is who I am. This is what I am. Uh, but when we look closely at what's actually appearing before the mind, we recognize that there's not really anything there. There's nothing substantial. There's nothing solid. There's nothing quite real that can be held on to. Uh, so again, naturally then, as one develops the perception of impermanence, naturally the perception of not-self starts to, starts to arise. Uh, it doesn't need to be done directly can be done directly, but it's not, not strictly necessary. Uh, so the practice of the perception of impermanence, uh, I'll talk more about it this afternoon. Uh, for now, I'd like to just go ahead and, and move directly into meditation so that we can all start to give this a try. Uh, so this is not something which lends itself particularly well to guided meditation, so I'm not going to give guided meditation. This is something that you're going to have to experiment with for yourself. Um, so again, start with your <coughs> samadhi practice, um, develop some concentration, some focus, uh, and once your mind is relatively stable, draw attention to the constantly changing, ephemeral, insubstantial nature of your sensations. Try to let go of the illusion of solid, persistent objects. So try to let go of this idea that the body is a solid, persistent object. Try to let go of the idea that the mind has uh, tangible uh, patterns. Try to let go of the idea that, that there's a persistent, ongoing thread uh, of, mm, of consciousness. Try to let go of the idea that the body is the same thing that it was a moment ago. Uh, and just open up to the groundlessness of experience. Uh, it's, it's like free fall. Uh, starting to realize that there's actually absolutely nothing that we can hold on to. and appreciating how incredibly freeing that is. So caveat, slight warning, uh, in the beginning, if you're not used to this kind of practice, in the beginning it can feel a little bit unsettling, it can feel a little bit weird. In fact, it can feel really weird. That's okay. Get used to feeling weird. Uh, because once you get past that, it starts to become incredibly interesting. Uh, as everything that you thought was solid and real melts before your eyes. If you're willing to allow that to happen. Don't worry, everything's still there. So after the meditation, your body will still be here. Probably. <laughs> no guarantees, but it will probably still be here. Uh, but be willing to have the experience of body and mind dissolving entirely. Be willing to have the experience of body and mind 
ceasing. Then your mind will start to open up a little bit. Uh, then the mind will start to release its white knuckled grip on dukkha. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, get in a meditation posture. <clears throat>